Hello, I'm Joseph Crandall. I'm Carl Preisner, and today we will be talking to you about BRIEF. BRIEF is a biological robotic imaging experimentation framework. Today, we will show you a physical system that is the basis for perceiving and manipulating a biological object. In the mid-1800s, Gregor Mendel performed experiments on pea plants and discovered the fundamental laws of inheritance. Because of his experiments, we now refer to him as the father of genetics. For years, Mendel cross-pollinated pea plants and recorded his observations. Every day, he would look at his plants and record the colors of the flowers and pea pods as well as the shapes of the peas, pods, and plants. As you might imagine, this process was very mundane and repetitive. Today, we still face the problem of performing repetitive tasks on a biological system. For example, when researchers are studying the effects of growth hormones in plants, they need to hand select the plant of interest, manually insert the hormone into the plant, and then periodically measure the plant to record its growth. There are two major problems with this process. One, it is difficult to achieve precision in measurements, and two, it is very time consuming. What if there was a way to iteratively create 3D models of a plant and manipulate them with a robotic actuator? A robotic system that can do this will have to repeatedly scan and manipulate the plant. And with this type of robotic system, we will be able to measure plant growth with extreme precision as well as remove repetitive manual labor. Let's lay down some ground rules for this scanning and manipulating process. If our robotic system is going to scan a plant, it must have the ability to scan a relatively large object. And in order to scan, we'll need a camera. But taking a picture from one location is not enough. If we want to generate a three-dimensional scan, we need to be able to image the plant from multiple angles. Now, I don't think any of us want to be stuck in the lab manually taking thousands of pictures every day. The scanner should be completely autonomous, ready to scan at the press of a button. That way, we could just sit back and enjoy. If we're going to manipulate an object, we're going to need some sort of actuator. We are using a robotic arm with a gripper attached to it. In order for the robot to manipulate an object in an open, continuous environment, it must first get data about the environment from its sensors. The scan of the plant is interpreted into a point cloud, which can then be converted into a triangular mesh. This mesh provides a series of surfaces for the robot to interact with. Now that the robot can see the object, we can manipulate it. At this point, the robot can pick up the plant and put it down in a different spot on the table. However, once the movement is complete, the robot no longer knows the orientation of the plant and can no longer see it. At this point, we need to repeat the scan and manipulation cycle. This is BRIEF, our biological robotic imaging experimentation framework. It has four main features. The first is the observation table. Any object that we want to scan and manipulate is placed on top of it. The next two components of BRIEF correspond to the scanning portion of our system. The camera arm has three motorized joints that can position the camera to a wide array of angles in its own two-dimensional plane. Additionally, the entire camera arm can circumnavigate the perimeter of the table. This allows the camera to take images from even more angles. As you can see, we are using an Xbox Kinect as our camera. It is different from any regular camera because it has both RGB and depth sensors. The best part is that it's fairly cheap. The fourth component of BRIEF is the Shunk Robotic Arm. And while it is not cheap, it is an excellent tool for manipulating the objects on the table. To sum it up, BRIEF begins by scanning an object on the observation table with the camera arm then the Shunk robotic arm can interpret the scan and manipulate the object. The first step of the scanning process is moving the camera arm into its initial position. For a greedy scan, this position maximizes the field of view of the object. Once it's in this position, we can begin scanning. Here you can see the camera arm moving around the perimeter of the table. 
While this is happening, the Kinect camera is taking images at about 30 frames per second. This is an example of what the camera sees while it is scanning. On the left we have the RGB stream. This is what we are used to seeing with any video camera. On the right is a stream of the RGB and depth images combined. We use the open source point cloud library for combining the two streams. After the camera has finished scanning the object, we can then take the images and use the point cloud library as well as a program called Connect Fusion to generate a 3D point cloud of what we have just scanned. In the future, we can use the point cloud library to perform calculations on the 3D models that we generate. For example, we can find the surface area of a plant and study how it changes while it grows. Additionally, the 3D model is necessary for a robot that wants to grab an object and manipulate it in some way. In order to safely manipulate a powerful and expensive robot, such as the Shunk Robotic Arm, roboticists must first make a simulation of the robot. The simulation allows for the roboticist to experiment with commands on the robot and understand the robot's controller before attempting to execute the same command on the physical robot. In the case of a collision, where the robot hits itself or another object accidentally, it is far better for this to happen in a simulation rather than in the physical world. What you are currently seeing is a gazebo simulation of the shunk arm simply reacting to gravity. This indicates that the controller is not currently running on the simulation and that the joints are not locked. In the future, we hope to show commands of the shunk arm executing in our gazebo simulation prior to execution on the brief robot. Although this is stock footage, we hope to be able to control our shunk robotic arm in the same manner by the end of the semester. Our arm is controlled through a shunk can open driver running on the Indigo version of the Ross operating system. We are currently working on launching a GUI with slider based control for the arm. The majority of my contribution to the brief project has been learning about Ross and all of its dependencies and commands. I have worked to document all of this so that individuals continuing on the project will have a much easier time understanding how ROS works with regards to the arm. Right now, I'm going to show you how I constructed the camera arm. But before I do that, I'd like to give a shout out to Andre and Pablo for helping me through this whole process. Let's take a look at how it's built from the ground up. There are four motors controlling the camera arm. The one on the bottom left is a stepper motor which pulls the camera arm around the table. The remaining three motors move the camera arm itself. Now I'll show you all how we send commands to the motors. We use an Arduino Uno to send commands to the three motors on the camera arm. An additional board is necessary for the Arduino to communicate with the two linear actuators. A Raspberry Pi sends commands to the Arduino, which in turn modifies the commands so that the motors can understand them. The stepper motor receives its commands directly from the Raspberry Pi. Like the linear actuators, it too needs another controller board in between. The Raspberry Pi, which has Ubuntu on it, is running a simple Python server that listens for specific commands from the main computer. Now there is only one more piece to the puzzle, the camera. The Kinect camera connects directly to the main computer, and all of the image gathering and 3D modeling is done on the main computer with the help of the Point Cloud Library. To drive the shunk arm to different locations, we must utilize inverse kinematics. Inverse kinematic equations allow an individual to calculate the position of the end effector, otherwise known as the tip of the robot. You calculate this by taking into account the angle each joint is at, as well as the distance between joints. The image above shows joints that can rotate in a two-dimensional plane. However, there are more complicated ball and socket joints that can rotate in three dimensions. Calculating the inverse kinematics of a robot becomes more complicated as more joints are added to the robotic arm, which creates more degrees of freedom. For example, the shunk arm has six degrees of freedom. These additional degrees of freedom mean that the robot now has multiple paths it can take in order for its end effector to arrive at a desired location. Determining which path to take is called motion planning and is part of the planning process we run in our ROS-based robot. In the future, 
we will add a gripper to brief so that we can truly manipulate objects on the observation table. The shank arm alone has six degrees of freedom, but in the future we will need to calculate inverse kinematics for the entire system, including the shank arm, the camera arm, and the gripper. This will help us avoid collisions. When Mendel was gathering data for his pea plants, he probably had to use his hand to move a leaf out of the way so he could see a pea pod that was hidden behind the leaf. In the future, we want Brief to be able to do this as well. In order to do that, Brief must be able to analyze a 3D point cloud and determine what additional camera angles are necessary so that it can create a better 3D model. In the case of a plant, Brief should have the ability to move a leaf out of the way so the camera can go back in and see what's behind it. We hope our presentation was informative and brief. Thank you.